we can get 10 likes from you guys, I will wear the hat. I look terrible in hats. Terrible. Hi guys, welcome to The Winding Ways. This is Joe and I'm Gummy. And today we wanted to talk to you about buying an older camper van, motorhome. 10 reasons oh, yes. to consider buying an older van. So there's a huge choice of vans out there. Um, you could easily spend, if you wanted to, a million pounds or a million dollars on a van. Equally, you could go and scour eBay and find one for probably a grand. Our van is about 20 years old now. She is 20 years old. She is 20 years old. She, she's young at heart. And we just wanted to kind of share with you why you should consider an older one. And the next video will be 10 bad things about an older van. So we have 10 reasons. We yes. decided to write down five reasons each that were kind of important to us. We have them in our lovely comrade's hat and we will be drawing from them randomly but I don't know what she's written, she doesn't know what I've written, so this could get interesting. What if we wrote the same things? The video is going to be quite short. <laughs> but um, this is an ode to our video of the military museum. Mm, yes, if you haven't checked did. that out there will be a link up yeah. there. So who goes first then? Ladies first. Ladies first, oh no, okay, I'm scared. Okay, I have personalization, your touch. Okay. Not your touch, as in. When you have like this really, really new camper van or motorhome, everything's really shiny and drilling or sticking things or just doing things to it seems really, I would struggle with it. I, I'm sure some people don't, <laughs> but I think for a lot of people, it's just easier to customize and personalize a van that is older just because it already has a little bit maybe more character and also because it's just less expensive and it's already got some sort of scratches. Like you've got a scratch and you're like, oh, I'll well, put a picture there. <laughs> what? Covering up blemishes. Covering up blemishes. What I do think, you think? I think, yeah. If you haven't seen our first video, this isn't a plug. If you haven't though, we didn't buy straight away. We rented a van to see if we liked it. And I would always recommend somebody to do that. It was lovely. It was like a year old. It was gorgeous. Mm. It had everything. Mm -hmm. And everything worked! <laughs> but it was so expensive, certainly for us yeah. anyway, it was so expensive that I wouldn't really think about getting that home and going, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to drill a hole through this and put something there. And I know of people who do, and they have no problem with that. That's one of the first things they'll do is start kind of you know, drilling and you know, putting things in there that they want. And, and yeah. customizing and everything else and, and if you are that type of person you know i i, really? I take my hat off yeah. to you um, <laughs> yeah. i'm not that brave when the van is older and cheaper it doesn't seem as scary in some ways so yeah i i, I kind of say yeah i'd agree with that one. all right your turn now i have got the layout, Ooh, that one layout. Is one of the first things you really need to kind of think about if you're buying a van is the interior layout so what we mean by that is where is stuff this is kind of a weird one because in a lot of ways van design has moved on a lot in the past 20 years or in the 20 years since our van was built it's moved on a lot modern technology things like electric beds that drop down from the ceiling at a touch of a button no we're not gonna have that our van is only 6.3 meters long and we have not seen i'm not saying there aren't ones but Certainly, it's very hard to find a 6.3 meter long van now mm -hmm. with rear bunk beds and with you know with the other kind of layout that we had because it's just not made anymore. They will use the drop downs instead. So, buying an older van can give you a layout that might not be available anymore. Yeah, yeah. There are some layouts that you know with market research and things like that, companies sort of went, okay, well, this is not worth it for us. And but with an older van, you know, they're still around and there's some interesting and sometimes even weird layouts yeah. that you can you can get. On to the next one. On to the next one. Do Cheaper used parts. So it's like if you have a car that is 20 years old and something breaks, then it's a lot cheaper to replace a part than in like a Mercedes that's this year's. Yeah. So, and camper van parts, I don't mean the carpet, but the inside, the hab area, 
Uh, the parts are cheaper. Sometimes some parts are really hard sometimes. to find. Sometimes. But generally it is cheaper and you can find used parts and you can get really, really lucky with, with things that broke and uh, you might want to replace them. I kind of, yeah, it's maybe not so much, I don't think, that parts necessarily are cheaper. I mean, a window, you know, if we break that window over there, then you know, a new window is going to be the same cost probably as it would for a, for a newer van. It's just that we're more likely to maybe find a breaker or um, you know, someone scrapping a van that that window will fit. Okay. My right. turn. Yeah, it's your turn. Yeah. Oh, some long writing. Previous owner, care and extras. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's yours. It is mine, yes. Okay. <laughs> it must be. So some people do some weird stuff in their vans. Um, mm. Like once we went to see a van that had a peephole in the bathroom looking out. Um, <clears throat> Which makes no sense. I don't. Maybe it was like a like a security thing. It was like a monitor. <laughs> maybe, device. but it was really creepy. The but whole van was think, creepy. You would think. Am I the only one? To, you know, comment down below. Am I just sick? I would have thought that if you're going to install a peephole into your shower, you would have it from the van looking into the shower. But no, this one looked out. I'm not going to explain this to you because I feel like I understand. But anyway. But a lot of people will show a lot of love to their vans and, and really, really care for them. And sometimes with the older vans, you get some really cool extras. Uh, we yeah. got a solar panel, two, two solar, solar panels, two yeah, solar panels. with our one. Uh, there were a few that we saw that had the Webasto uh, heaters already installed and things like that. Aircon, which we didn't, we don't have aircon. <laughs> but you do get some things that people kind of put in, like in our bathroom, we have this little organizer for all our shampoos and stuff that I hate the look of, but it's there and we use it all the time. And it's just these little thoughts that people that owned the van or the camper before you kind of, they've already gone through it. They're like, oh, this needs a hook and this needs a something. And you come in and it's sort of more ready to live than a new one where everything's just there to look really nice and exactly and then you're scared to drill into it. <laughs> okay, I'll draw. Hopefully this one will be yours. You're cheating. Stop I'm cheating. Not, okay, fine. <laughs> I'll stop cheating. So much I'm not random. cheating, okay. Simpler engine. Ha! Yes. This <laughs> this is something that may or may not be a concern for you, but kind of for, for me it is and it's also got some downsides as well but in general I'll explain so modern diesels are normally Euro 6 which means that they are a lot, a lot less polluting normally better mileage as well miles per gallon uh, more economical but they're also a lot more complicated they have computers hooked up to every single part of that engine monitoring and making adjustments which is why they're so economical and why they are so low on emissions which makes them very good which makes them very complicated to fix our engine <laughs> is a tractor and so i kind of i have quite a lot of faith that no matter really where we are and obviously being based on a fiat decato as well it's one of the most popular delivery vans in the world so it doesn't really matter where we go if we have an engine problem we can probably get it fixed by somebody with a hammer no, fair enough. My turn. No cheat. No. Sturdiness. Which is also me. She's a tank. <laughs> Vernilda, Vernilda is a tank. Um, Not me. <laughs> so again, going back to this rental van that we had. Lovely. It drove like a car. It didn't even feel like a van to drive. It just felt like a big car. Vernilda, she doesn't. It's like driving a giant tank. We've seen a lot of vans. We've been to look at a lot of vans. We went to, before COVID, we went to a big motorhome show. And again, all the new vans mm. are lovely. Their interiors are gorgeous. Our wood, as you can see, is not the most attractive colour. It's not the worst. No. It's not the <laughs> most attractive. But everything feels built to last. It's not that kind of, you know, Ikea type feeling, very lightweight kind of board. It's solid. It really, really is. It's very, very solid. It's, I mean, you know, sound effect of opening and closing a drawer. You know, it 
thunks shut. You get annoyed to find you that. <laughs> I do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just solid. Everything's solid. Out the ladder to get up into our mm, overcab bed. It's gigantic. Probably weighs four thousand pounds, and you, we haven't found a new van yet that has that same kind of feeling of just, just built to last. It's, you know, being sturdy and yeah. Well, the reason is obviously weight, but probably, but yeah, yeah. absolutely, you can really, really with all the rounds. Just the build quality, and I'm not saying that newer vans have bad build quality per se. It's just less sturdy. So there has to be there has to be give somewhere, and it's still nice. It's still fun. It's still lovely. Some of the designs we are so jealous of. We mm -hmm. would love to have your beautiful cream and dark wood interiors. We can't have them. We don't have that much money. But the one upside of not being able to afford it is that ours is just solid. So yeah. Yeah, with kids that. and the dog, it helps as well. With, you know, just. And me, because I break it. <laughs> <And>, uh, <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> it's true, it's absolutely true. Yeah. Ben's not a problem, I am. So I drew character, which is mine, which is funny because you would think that character would be one of yours. Would. Yeah, but it is mine. I put Maybe that it's in. in there as well. Ah, fair enough. It's well, we'll cut it out if it is. <laughs> it's not, but... So anyway, so I drew character. Character is something that is usually very important to Joe. Older motorhomes have this sort of je ne sais quoi. Sorry, excuse my French. <laughs> my bad French. Uh, just something. <laughs> you know, there's the... Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. I know what it means. <laughs> Older vans sort of have this soul about them, and maybe because they've had a life, you know, and they've gone through adventures, and also older things or retro things just tend to have this something. I don't know what in French. So every van kind of has a story, or it's, it makes a story. You know, every holiday you go on, whether you know, something stupid happens, or something bad happens, or something good happens, it kind of adds to the, the kind of the story of your van. And older vans generally have some battle scars. It doesn't matter what they are. For example, one side of our van, you will see it. Yeah, we've got an upcoming kind of van tour at some point. One side of our van is pristine. It looks, oh, yeah. it, apart from the slightly faded kind of stickers, mm -hmm. it looks brand new. The other side, it looks as if it has been shot <laughs> by a madman with an air rifle. They yeah. are just, it's covered in dents. They don't go through the aluminium, so we're not bothered. But the appearance is just... It's hail damage. It's I really don't it see it. It looks terrible. So I really like it. I think exactly. It's character. It's, it's yeah. special. It's Brunhilde. You know, that's it's kind of part, part of, of her, her story. Yeah. So I think, that, yeah, character is... They do have it. Not all of it's good. Yeah. <laughs> not all of it's good. Peepholes are not okay. Peepholes, yeah. Peepholes that you just van, shout are not okay people. The same van had very sticky floors with carpet. That, it was just... It was, Oh god, I need like five showers after going yeah, in there. So it, it, was, <laughs> it, it should have been it. set on fire. Yes, it probably it has been. Yeah, yeah. Why did you fold them? You're supposed to like look at them oh, bigger. Okay. I have price. There's me. Ah. <laughs> price. So they're cheaper. Mm. Okay, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> they're cheaper. It's um, a big it's a big one though. You, you know, it's kind they, of an obvious one, but it's a big one. It is it's huge. I mean even a, a cheaper van, new, is going to be in the region of forty to fifty thousand pounds, and that's not high end. It's not going to have all of the toys and bells and whistles. It's a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, even an older van is a lot of money. It's just yeah, it it's is. less. <laughs> um, so even an older van is not a small investment, and obviously everybody's pockets are you know different sizes. You may consider fifty grand to be, you know, pocket change, weekend spending. It may be an insurmountable kind of figure. Everybody has different you know, levels of income and different yeah. levels of kind of you know, expenditure, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's great. But the thing with buying an older van is that there will probably be something to suit your budget, even if your budget is lower. You know, there is not a single new van we could have bought, mm -hmm. not one. But by buying an older van, we've got something that we love and perfectly fits our needs. Will it fit our needs forever? No, it probably won't. But at the time, 
and for now it does it was something that we could afford and rather than spending the next five to eight years saving up to maybe buy that new van in eight years time what buying an older van has let us do is have a van now and spend those five to eight years traveling and having our van and exploring in our van and living it yeah so, yeah. yeah all right i got um i think it's my turn was it my turn i don't know it is now yeah <laughs> things and scrapes so we talked a little bit about don't look that bad <laughs> Thank you, bold patch. <laughs> patches, patches, patches. Done. Things and scrapes. Okay, what so things mean? and scrapes. So we've already mentioned the hail damage. It's, it, see, I don't care, <laughs> but uh, that's a good thing in, in a way because you're not as afraid to go down some really dodgy <laughs> roads. Because if you, you know, ding it or scratch it, it's a little bit less painful. You still spent some money, like a lot of money, but it's not as bad. Uh, and it's not, you know, brand new and shiny and every scratch. You're just like, oh my God. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing, I think, that you can be maybe a little bit less gentle. You still, you still got to be, I think, cautious. I mean, yeah. obviously, we've got a giant overcab sitting yeah. there. It's not a hope. You're not saying we you, know, you can just go and ram that into a tree. Um, no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but yeah, I, w I would feel a lot more comfortable, I think, with taking this places where I wouldn't take the rental van, for example. And I wouldn't do it anyway because it's a rental and yeah. you know, we try to be nice people and consider it. But also just knowing how much money that that would cost. You know, if, if you do something terrible to it, it's a lot of money. We try to be considered. I almost burned that van down, the, the rental one. Mm. I did. It was a story for another time. Yeah, it's a story for another time. Okay, your turn to draw the last one. Oh, what could it be? The mystery for you. <laughs> it is depreciation. It Such goes an exciting one <laughs> for the you end. Know, yeah, yeah. It kind of goes along with the price. I mean, you can jump onto eBay or, or Auto Trader and you can see you know, 20, 25, sometimes even older, Heimers especially. Uh, they do have a bit of a kind of a cult following they're and they're cool. still selling in in the thousands sometimes in the tens of thousands and even non-heimers so as isn't uh as is a burstner which is still a pretty good make but after a certain point the depreciation kind of not stops but they hold their value it, they do they hold their value an awful lot new vans also do hold their value i'm not trying to say that they don't but if you buy a new van when you sell it you're going to take a huge hit. You, you, you possibly Just the moment you drive tens it out. Tens of thousands. You know, tens of thousands. Well, I think it's one day even. Like if you drive it out, it's already depreciated yeah, it's, quite yeah, a lot. The, yeah, the minute you leave the port, kind of thing. For example, also a gigantic cold following for Volkswagens. And they are like, they can be super expensive. Yeah. And the, the long and the short of it is if, you know, if we take care of our van and nothing major breaks that we don't repair, in two, three years' time, we could probably sell this for exactly what we paid for it. Maybe a bit more. So there you have it, guys. That's 10 good things about older camper vans and motorhomes. If you have other things that we didn't think of, yeah. please let us know. We would love to hear. If, if you've got an older van, why did you buy an older van? Was it the price or... or... Was it the character? Was it something that we haven't thought of? We'd love to, to hear your comments, so please leave them down below. Thank you very much. It's been great talking to you, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye! Bye! We can't do another video of just outtakes. Okay. If you like what you've seen on our videos, please do give us a like, and if you could see your way to hitting that subscribe button and that notification button, it really does help us.